Hello, my name is Ed Frawley. I own Learbird. And we have a good question here from a person whose dog digs and scratches in their dog bed in their house. And uh, we know this because a couple of our dogs do the exact same thing. But this one, I'll first read, uh, I'll read the question and then we'll talk about it. Hi, I have a one-year-old Brittany and she digs on her bed. Most dogs do scratch in the circle and, they, and then they lay down, but she scratches and digs and doesn't lay down. This is worse when she's overly tired. How do I help her correct this behavior? Currently, if we go to her and hold her paw, she will calm down, <laughs> but it takes a while for her to relax. So then he said, I'm not sure this is something that you can correct in your dog. You don't, she, we don't think you can train her out of doing that. Um, Cindy asks, do you have specific types of beds that cause the dog to do that? And uh, she mentioned that we have two little dogs and both of our dogs, uh, Shih Tzu and a Border Terrier, will dig and scratch before they lay down. Uh, usually, with our dogs, it's just an issue of being overly exuberant and it, it's kind of like a nesting behavior. But it doesn't sound like this is what this woman has or person has. So they wrote back when Cindy asked the question about what kind of bed. Fluffy beds are the worst, they said. Blankets are better, so we just use those. But when she does it, it's almost frantic and she does not just lay down after a short period of time like a normal dog generally does. We tried correcting her with a command, that's enough. We tried keeping her on leash and raising the leash up to stop her from doing that, basically a correction, uh, and that didn't work. Now the only thing that seems to work is us soothing her and, take, and talking her down till she relaxes, and that usually takes about two minutes. She would go on for 15 minutes if we let her, which I worry about because that would tear up the bed, the blanket, or the carpet. Good point. So should I just let her do it till she finally lays down and she'll gradually grow out of it? I admit it's gotten better over time and is worse when she is super tired. Note from this person. She does not do it in her crate. But we're trying to give her more freedom, and she has no other concerns while out of the crate. Thank you for your time and your suggestions. Cindy goes on to say, I think that they have to decide what's important for them. I think for us, I can tell you that we would put the dog in a dog crate. We wouldn't give it an opportunity to sit there and dig and dig and dig like that. This dog seems to be okay in a dog crate. We would put it in a dog crate. And we may move the dog crate closer to where we are. In other words, uh, at our house, we have X-pens and dog crates. We have dog crates in a certain part of our, of our home because we have four dogs. We have an X-Pen right in front of the TV where our little one-year-old, year-and-a-half-year-old Chihuahua is. Her name's Pip. So we'll put Pip inside the X-Pen and the Border Terrier and the Chihuahua, they can lay around in the living room. Those are the ones that are gonna scratch, but they stop on their own. If we had one of these dogs doing that, we have a dog crate in the other room. We might bring that dog crate in for now and put the dog in a dog crate. And it sounds like that would be a solution for the dog. We would make sure that the dog, and it sounds like they do this, that the dog gets tired and it's worse when it's tired, but we would give the dog some mental stimulation and by that we do reward-based training. So we would train with the dog, not train her to stop digging. We would just do normal obedience training. Training is exercise for dogs, mental exercise, and it will help. It may not cure this dog, but they have to be careful about letting a dog like this, scratch and scratch and tear up 
some of the fluffy dog beds or dog towels, because if it's a dog that's gonna ingest pieces of a dog bed, that's a serious thing, because that can cause a blockage, blockage in the intestines, and if they miss it, that blockage, it can kill the dog. If they don't miss it, at best, they're gonna spend $1,500 or $2,000 to take the dog to the vet and have surgery to have it removed. We have a friend of ours, uh, who I will not mention, <laughs> though we love her, who has had one of her dogs go through two or three different surgeries because it ate socks or it ate part, parts of a dog bed. And if their dog is doing that, that's not too good. If, she, if they know she's really tired, put her in the dog crate. And you might have to put a sheet or something over the dog crate door so the dog just has to lay down and settle. Um, it all comes down to there's no right or wrong answer that I can tell you from here. You have to work and we have to work with the dog that's sitting right in front of us. There are no rules in dog training. There's only opinions and ideas. And in the end, the owner has to think outside the box and solve their own problems. And I hope I gave them, uh, this person, some ideas here. But I think sitting down and holding the dog's paw and doing that type of stuff, I don't think that's a solution. That's only going to make it worse and worse and worse. You just need to tough it out, put it in a dog crate, and wait until it stops doing it, and then test it every now and then. And if it's scratching, 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 don't get mad. Don't holler at the dog. Just go get a food treat, put the dog on leash, take it over to the crate, toss a food treat in there, unhook it, put it in the crate and lock it in there, make it go lay down. So if you have some questions about you and your dog, uh, we're going to put a couple of recommended uh, DVDs and streams and online courses at the end of this that may help you with you and your dog.